In this video, I'll give an overview how to install Transat on a Linux machine. To begin with, navigate to the Transat-CFD websites. Here, you'll find more information relevant to Transat, as well the installation manuals which will be most up-to-date. If you have not already done so, go to the download page, and under the download center, you can log in to the customer portal to download and install Transat. If you have not already done so, click to create an account. There, you can register, ensure you use an institution email address, such as work or school. After doing so, you'll get login credentials to log into the customer portal. With your credentials, can sign in. The main page of the Transit portal gives you the possibility to go to the downloads and cases. If you have a support issue with Transit, you can get it resolved under cases. Under the Transit downloads, under all material, we'll download Transat 5.7 for Linux. Click to save the file. Once Transat has finished downloading, we can open a terminal to continue the remaining steps of installation. We'll check in the downloads directory and see that the Transat material has been downloaded. The remaining steps of installation can be completed entirely on terminal, meaning for a cluster or headless system without a monitor, uh, you can SSH and install Transat directly with the terminal. We'll need to prepare some dependencies and ensure they're available on the system. On Ubuntu, we'll use the package manager apt-get. Other operating systems, such as OpenSUSE, for example, may have another package manager, like Zipper. Using sudo for accessing the permissions, we'll apt-get install the following uh, packages that we'll require for Transat. Just clicking yes so that it will be installed. Using the same command, we'll check for G++ and again accept for it to be installed. Next, make, or actually GNU make, which comes under just make. Lib standard C++, pressing tab, I can check other names, and I'll want dash six, dash dev, Also, check for libstandard C++ 6 is already installed. Next, we'll need lib glib 2.0-0 is already there. Also, lib 2.0-dev G4Tran libpng libtiff
een nieuw plaat. En finally, gzip. Those are all of the packages included on the distribution that need to be installed. There are still two more dependencies that need to be installed that aren't included on this with the package manager. This includes OpenMPI and Petsy. We'll find some location that will install these various softwares. For example, I'll create a directory called software. Moving into the directory, I have a place where I'd like to install OpenMPI, Petsy, and at the very end, Transat. So first we need to download OpenMPI and Petsy. To install either, we can go to a web browser and first download the software. For example, at openmpi.org is the main website for OpenMPI. Under Downloads, version 1.5, we require 1.5.5.targz. In case you are on a headless system and can't access a web browser, you can also use the exact link. For example, using wget and pasting this link will also download OpenMPI. Next, we'll download Petsy to prepare for installation. Again, in the same manner, we'll navigate to the Petsy website, which is under mcs.anl.gov slash Petsy. Under download, we need to download version 3.2-P7. with wget, and this exact link, I can download Petsy. I'll use ls to list the contents of the directory and show that these have been downloaded. Next, we need to extract these archives. Using the Linux command tar, with options X, Z, V, F, can extract OpenMPI. And again, tar X, Z, V, F to extract the Petsy. Again, I'll show the contents of the directory and I have folders where the software has been extracted to. Those are the source contents, which means it's not built yet on our system. We can navigate first into OpenMPI to build the OpenMPI software on our Linux machine. To do this, we need to set to use gfortran with the following variables, the system variables. We'll export fc to be the same for, as the for, gfortran command. Also export f77 as gfortran. The first step to build OpenMPI is to configure. There is a file called configure in the folder. This also requires a few arguments. These need to be entered in correctly and should not be copied. Therefore, type directly into the terminal the following arguments. Enable static equals yes. Enable shared equals no. Prefix, this is the folder where OpenMBI should be built into. So I've chosen the path to my 
folder in the software directory for a new folder called OpenMPI. Taking time to confirm that the arguments don't have any mistakes, I can press Enter and configure OpenMPI. This may take some time. Once the configuration is finished, we can use the next step of the build process with the make command. This may also take some time, so please be patient. Finally, after the make command has completed, we'll use make install, and this will finish the installation of OpenMPI on our Linux machine. This should take just a few minutes more. We can check that OpenMPI was successfully installed by going to the directory, specifying the installation. There, we should have several folders. One specifically called BIN for binaries should contain many executables that are the MPI applications. Therefore, we can continue with installing PETC. This is done in the same manner like OpenMPI with configure and make steps. So we'll navigate to the folder where we've extracted PETC. Then we'll configure in the following manner. With the configure file in the folder, using the following arguments. Again, please type these with your keyboard. Do not copy paste from the manual as they will be copied incorrectly. Download fblast laypack equals yes. Download hypery equals yes. With debugging equals no. With shared libraries equals no. With dynamic loading equals no. With MPI directory or dir equals the installation location where OpenMPI was previously installed to. This will use OpenMPI to help install PETC. And finally, the location where to install PETC. Now I get the output that shows PETC is being correctly configured. This will again take a few moments and need some patience to wait for it to finish. With the configuration step of PETC complete, we can continue with the make command, similar like an open MPI. However, we are given after the configuration directly the command we can enter. We can check it's correct. It should be make with environment variable petc underscore dir equals, and then the directory to where uh, petc was downloaded to and extracted. And with the environment variable petc arc equals arc linux 2 c opt, and then all at the end to make all. This may also take some time and require some patience. Finally, with the make step complete, it's possible to install PETC with make install command. It's provided here, or you can confirm from the installation manual. It should again have the same environment variables as before, but with install. This step goes quite quickly, and we can test that installation was finished correctly. The test examples were completed and PETC was installed successfully. Now we have all of the dependencies available that Transat needs. Once OpenMPI and PETC are successfully installed, we need to set some path and environment variables. On a Linux system to do so, assuming you're using a bash shell, we need to edit the file called .bashrc. I use the editor Vim or another editor like gedit would work fine as well. We add these lines.
This will prepend the OpenMPI bin directory to the path. Next, we'll set an environment variable for PETC. This creates a new environment variable called PETC Deer. Be sure to use the proper folder name of your account. Once I save and close the file, I can use source the file to apply the changes. Doing so, I can check that everything is working using the which command, which will show that it recognizes the various commands are in the path. Next, I can check that the uh, Petsy deer environment variable is working by using the dollar sign to expand it out. And also list the contents in the directory. So that confirms that everything is working. At this point, we can install Transat. Assuming you have not already done so, we'll extract the transat tar. Once transat has finished extracting, we can check that it's a directory there. And we'll need to set some more path. Um, we'll need to add some more directories to the path in order to use transat. To do so, it will be the same method as with OpenMPI. We'll need to edit the bash rc file at the bottom, adding some lines with path equals with the path where transit is installed, changing your account name, and adding the transit MB folder bin and prepending to the path. We'll need three instances of this for different locations. Once for MB, once for UI, and once for Python. These three locations are for the solver, the user interface, and Python used for transit. With those three lines added, we can close, save and close the basher C and source it to apply the changes. Next, we'll use the which command again to check the items of transit can be found by the system including tmbrun.py, tmbinitcompile.py, tmblink.py, transatui.py, and transatpython. With all of these items successfully found, transat is um, able to be found in the system path. However, we need to prepare one last step to use the solver. We need to run the tmb link.py command. With a Python version and with the command found in the system, we can directly run it. We will get linking of the transit executable. This may take a few moments. However, I didn't have a successful linking. I get an error compiling message, and the error relates to making a Pi object. If you have this error, there is a solution to get linking to work. To do so, navigate to the installation of Transat into the MB folder where the solver is, and into a folder called INC. In here, we have a few files called settings. One is the default, which should um, normally work. In case you have this error, we'll um, move settings nopy to replace settings.cfg. Now we can go back to the home and run TMB link again. Again, taking a few moments, we'll wait. And linking was successful this time. To check that transat is working, I can run transatui.py, which will launch the user interface.
I'll briefly check a tutorial, which is included also in the software installation of Transit under the tutorials, tutorial 1.1. For the moment, I won't run with user defined functions and execute the simulation with one processor. Below, I can see the command, the output of transat. And I will notice that I get a warning that the environment variable transat license not set. This restricts my version of transat or my installation of transat to demonstration mode or demo mode. That means I can only run on four processors maximum and for a total of one hour maximum. I will then exit Transat and show you how to set the Transat license environment variable to use um, to lose to use your given license of Transat. Again, it's by editing the bash RC, and I'll need to export a license in a variable called Transat LIC equals home your username, and then giving the path where you have put the license file. You should have, have received a file called transat.lic, which will contain your license, for example, as a my system. You'll need to source the bashrc one more time to take the changes of the license and to check we can echo the transat license environment variable. After that, you should be able to use the full capabilities of transat.